says that screening for coronavirus is happening at all entry points in the country, with training of medical staff ongoing. Kagwe's media address on the country's preparedness in dealing with the potential outbreak of COVID-19 in the country was going on at the Mbagadi Hospital, which has been completed as an isolation and treatment facility following a directive by President Uhuru Kenyatta. Let's listen in to what the CS had to say. And to know what other countries are doing, and therefore to do the same or even better. Let me also add that at all points of entry, at all points, all points of entry in this country, there is mandatory screening. Now, there are those who may not realize that we are being screened because sometimes we are using thermal scanners. So I have heard people say, I passed by the place and I wasn't screened. You were screened. You, didn't, you just didn't know that you were. So uh, let me make it clear. Nobody is going to come into Kenya without screening. On our, at the airports, at the ports, we are making arrangements even in other areas where people walk into Kenya, let alone fly into Kenya, in Busia, in Namanga, and other uh, centers. In that respect also, we are working with the East African, East African community this morning we met with doctors from uh, the five East African countries in my office, uh, and, this, and this is all to work together with other nations. This is not a singular nation activity. We are sensitizing and training throughout. There isn't a single day that we are not training some part of, in some, training in some part of this country. We have, we have trained over 1,100 health workers, we have deployed them in Jomo Kenyatta International Airport and other areas, and we are also sensitizing and cascading this training all the way to the community, to the community levels. We have procured sufficient uh, personal protective equipment um, for our workers. Let's never forget the first line of defense is our workers and we are making sure that our workers are properly protected. The, Dr. Kamole was explaining to you as we came in how this facility is going to work. You can see the, that it's being secured. The entrances will be from the other side, completely different entrance from the rest of the, of the facility, just so that uh, there isn't any possibility of uh, anybody, anybody coming close or anybody coming in contact who is not supposed to, or civilians coming in contact. I want to mention that we are closely working with the, the World Health Organizations. We are closely working with WHO. We are working with Africa CDC. And we are also working with the, the US CDC, amongst others. Members of the public are encouraged to remain vigilant as the risk is still high. And I advise to continue taking precautionary measures at all times, at all times. Let's maintain basic hand and respiratory hygiene and safe food practices. We launched a free, we'll be sending information to your mobile phones for free under an arrangement we have made with the Safaricom so everybody is going to be getting information about the disease, what to do, washing your hands, avoid close contact with the people showing any sign of this. Let's not panic. Let's not get to the point where you can't even uh, say jumbo to me. We have uh, temporarily lift, lifted the ban uh, so that um, the ban on the flight uh, from Italy, just one flight, to come to Kenya to lift the people who had been locked in when we banned the flights from uh, Verona and the rest of the Verona and um, Northern Italy, Milan. But there are people who are locked in in Malindi, about 800 of them. So what we have done is that we have allowed 
Press Victoria reporter Grace Korea was following that press by the Health Cabinet Secretary. She now joins us live for an update. Grace, an executive order by President Uhuru Kenyatta has been met. The 120 bed capacity isolation and treatment center at the Bagadi Hospital has been unveiled. But what else has the country done in preparedness to combat the virus? Indeed, Michelle, I'm actually inside one of those wards. As you said, it is a 120 bed capacity here at the Mbagathi Hospital. And as I did tell you, I'm in one of the wards. You can clearly see behind me, around me, the beds, of course, ready for any issue of, uh, or any case of uh, COVID-19, that is coronavirus, that may hit the country if it happens, Michelle. And of course, what we've had from the CS Health, that is uh, Mutahi Kagwe, is that the facility has all equipment up to ICU level. We have all diagnostic facilities. We have the labs. We have all the drugs. There's actually a standby power supply, a standby oxygen supply, Michelle. And uh, what we had from Kagwe today is that they are ready in case there is any case of a coronavirus that is reported in the country, Michelle. Now, we also understand that this is not just an isolation ward, but also an isolation and treatment facility. Remember, as you said, Michelle, when uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta issued the executive order on uh, Friday, he did call for the, this facility to be complete in about uh, seven days. Remember, this came just a day after the health CAS, Rashid Aman, said that it would be complete in 30 days. But of course, it is complete, as you can see, Michelle. Now, there's a lot of issues that have come up in uh, today's address by the CS, including that of the students in Wuhan. Remember, there's been an uh, outcry of people asking uh, the government to bring them in, but they say that uh, intelligence dictates that they remain there because uh, we don't have a case of any student that is unwell in Wuhan. Um, uh, they are under self-quarantine in Wuhan, and of course uh, bringing them here would be a bit risky. Actually, the CS said that we should not just compare ourselves. We should not do things because other countries are doing them. He assured us that the students in Wuhan are safe, and in fact, in fact, Michelle, that there's no case, there's no positive case in Wuhan and, of course, also here in Kenya, Michelle. A lot of, a lot of issues that have come up today, um, uh, including uh, just a message to the public. Uh, the CS is asking people not to panic, not to... Uh, uh, the word used was actually xenophobia, not to profile individuals. If you can remember, Michelle, we did have that clip that was doing rounds of Kenyans uh, um, uh, sort of like calling uh, some other nationals coronavirus. Where were any coronavirus? That's what we saw. He did ask them not to profile. Now, there's something else that is important that the CS has said about a lifting of uh, the ban of the flights from uh, Italy. Michelle, just allow me. I have been moving a little bit, hence why this earpiece did uh, move, Michelle. But of course, we did see the CS say that they have lifted that ban, um, uh, saying that that has been lifted in order for a, a, a flight to come in from Italy to get around 800 people who are currently stuck in Malindi. So one flight will be coming with no passenger from Italy, Michelle, just to get those 800 passengers from uh, Italy. A lot has been said, including messages that the Ministry of Health is sending to people, which I believe perhaps, Michelle, you have received, I have received mine, and he said that such uh, messages of sending information to members of the public will be seen in the coming days, uh, Michelle.